What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 30 in the Math 1 released questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question gives us two functions, and we are supposed to find all the points at which the graphs of these two functions will end up intersecting. Now, there's two ways to solve this, and each one is going to test a different skill. I'm going to go over both of them in this video. First, um, it would be good for us to know how to find these intersections and solutions in the calculator. But second, it would be helpful to know how to solve a quadratic and linear system by what's called elimination, which I don't think is what you're thinking of if you haven't yet heard of elimination. But anyway, let's get started by using the calculator commands. So I'm going to pull up my calculator, and I'm going to plug in this as my y1 and this is my y2, so 3x, and then this is the squared button here. So 3x squared plus 14x minus 5. And then my second function, 11x plus 13. Now I'm going to press zoom and make sure that I'm at the regular window dimensions by going to Z standard. So when I press that, okay, I can see that parabola and I can see the line, but it doesn't really look like they're doing a whole lot. So when I say zoom, I'm going to try zooming out. And let's see now. Okay, that's, and that's probably about as good as I'm going to get in terms of my window, unless I decide to actually shrink the dimensions a little bit. So I press window, x min I'll make negative 20, x max I'll make 20. Okay. All right, that looks like it's a little easier to see, and it looks like I have this point and this point there already. So now, the command I'm going to use to actually find these intersections. I'm going to go to my calc menu and to find it. Second, because it's in yellow writing, and I press calc. And now there's all these options here, but I'm interested in intersect. And now as I go along my first curve, I can only move left or right as I go along um, each of my graphs. So I'm going to move left until I get as close as I can to this intersection, which it looks like is about here. I press enter. Second curve, that's still really close, so I'm going to press enter again. When I say guess, here's what it gives me. X is negative 3, Y is negative 20. Now these are coordinates and this is a point. And I can actually find that point here in one of my answer, in all of my answer choices. And now I'm going to find the other point because there are actually two of these intersections. So once again, I do second trace or second calc, go down to intersect. And this time my intersection is kind of up here a ways. So it's probably about there. So I'll make that my first curve. Second curve is still close, I guess. And it tells me x is 2 and y is 35. All right, so these are my two points. But there is a more algebraic way to solve this that might be a good way for you to check your answer or a good thing for you to do and then use your calculator to check. And it's actually what we call elimination. And that means that essentially, I'm going to take my first function and I will subtract my second function from my first function. Now 3x squared minus nothing is just going to give me 3x squared, so that's fine. 14x minus 11x, that's like if I have $14 and I spend $11, which leaves me with positive $3. And now, this is where it gets a little tricky because if I'm subtracting some stuff in parentheses, I have to make sure that anything with a plus sign in front of it gets that change to a minus sign. So this is now negative 5 minus 13, oops, that should be 3x, which using my rules of integers would get me negative 18 or minus 18. And now that I have the difference between these two, I can go ahead and factor these, or I can go ahead and factor this because the zeros of this expression are actually going to give me the same x values as the solutions to this. So if I want to go ahead and factor this, I'm going to start by looking at my coefficients and seeing if I can find a common just number factor that I can pull out, and that's actually going to be 3. So this is 3 times x squared plus x, and then what's 18 divided by 3? Well, that's 6. So this will be x squared plus x minus 6. And now I'm going to do that thing where I'm going to cheat just a little bit and say that I don't need my 3 or this stuff in parentheses and I just want to look at x squared plus x minus 6, I'm going to remind myself that there's an imaginary 1 here, 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and look for those two mystery numbers. I'll call them A and B. And I'm looking for these numbers to multiply to get me negative six and add to get me positive one. All right, so this negative sign here tells me that I'm actually looking for two numbers that have, um, that multiply to give me negative six but have a difference of one, and I'll show you why in a second. So in terms of the factor pairs that can get me six, the ones that I know are made of whole numbers are two and three, and then one and six, and that's it. Now, in terms of the pair that has a difference of one, it's just two and three. I look at this number here that I'm trying to get them to add to. It's positive, which means I want my bigger absolute value here to be my positive and my smaller one to be my negative, which means that now I have enough information to actually take this and write it as its linear factors, which are x minus 2 and x plus 3. And it's at this point that I just go ahead and set each of these equal to 0. So what minus 2 equals 0? Well, that's just 2. Oh, let me scoot that up so you can see. What minus 2 equals 0? Well, that's 2. And then what plus 3 equals 0? Well, that's negative 3. And at this point, the last thing I want to do for this question is just compare this x to this point, which also has an x of 2, and this x to this point, which also has an x of negative 3. So the method of factoring and subtracting this function from this one, getting this thing, and factoring out um, whole numbers, and then going through that actual uh, reverse FOIL process of factoring, got me the same two x values as here, but the calculator method has the advantage of also giving you the y values so that you can be absolutely sure because they might try to trick you and throw in like negative 3 and 19 or something like that.